Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going on to part 9 of this dog. Um, we're getting there, we are slowly getting there. And we're going to just keep going with this white chest fur. Um, depending how long it's going to take us, we may start bringing in the black fur and the whiskers. Um, if not, this area will be the next part. So yeah, um, I will get started. Uh, remember to subscribe, like if you haven't already, and let's go. So I've zoomed you in and we're going to start here. The bottom of this um, we're going to do um, as a faded line. So I will show you how I do my faded, uh, faded bottoms on my portraits. Okay, so as usual I've got my one grey one. And this is my base layer. And I'm just applying it again where we can see this white fur. This will probably show us that we may need to darken some of this fur up, but we shall see. And I'm just going to follow the fur direction, applying a medium kind of pressure to this fur. Sorry, I've just moved the camera up because I realised you probably couldn't see what I was doing. <laughs> so following the fur direction, fairly long pencil strokes because it is long fur. Now as you get closer to the bottom of this piece you're going to start tapering your edges. So you're going to follow the fur direction, you're going to start lifting that pencil off very lightly. You want these bottom edges to be very light. So you see we've got fairly hard, harder pressure here with the white fur and then as you come down Lift that pencil up and give a really soft edge at the bottom. And we're going to soften that out even more. Oops, sorry if you can hear my dog licking. <laughs> right, I'm just going to get the warm grey too. And this is just going to create some... Hi uh, not highlights, shadows, sorry. And again, as we come down the bottom, I'm going to really make sure I'm lifting that pencil, giving that soft edge. I'm then going to come in with a white. Um, where's my white gone? Hang on. Now a Luminance or a Derwin or a Carandash white um, would be probably work better because they're very soft but um, like I've been doing I'm sticking with the polychromos for this piece and along this bottom I'm going to start where the pigment is and drag the pigment down with this white and I'm using fairly hard pressure here I'm going to drag that pigment down and this is going to help give you that really soft edge and you can do it on the edges up here you really wanted like if I showed you on a darker edge if I drag that pigment down you can just see how much it softens that fur now you don't need to do this up here but um, we definitely want it along this faded bottom okay and then back to the warm grey one and we're just gonna get this base layer down now again making sure we follow this fur direction And I'm making sure that I'm using the sharp point in areas. Medium pressure. And again, look back at that reference photo and get these fur directions um, in place. And this bit's probably going to take a while to get this base layer down. But that's fine, we will get there. <laughs> So I've actually created a Facebook group. If you are on Facebook and you're following along with my tutorials on my artwork, um, and it's going to be a place where you can share your artwork, um, artwork from my tutorials, artwork that you've created in general, a place you can ask for advice, how to improve a um, piece of work. I want it to be a nice community. Um, so I'll leave a link to that in the description. So there's a bit of fluff there. 
um, and yeah feel free to join and share your work if you're following this tutorial I know there's a few people that are or will be um, I'd love to see them and I hope that having a place like that um, yeah we'll, we can build a nice community so you can see I'm still adding this base layer we're going to come in with some cold colours and uh, some more warmer tones as well this area hopefully won't take us too long right I'm going to get the uh, cold grey too I'm just going to start mapping in where I can see some like clumps We want to map in these clumps of fur. So keeping with this cold grey too, and we're just going to follow it along the edges here. I think for this white fur, we're going to um, we are going to get the burnish. Uh, we're going to burnish, which is um, using that white pencil that like we did down here to really push that pigment into the paper, and this will help us get a really nice smooth effect. Um, so I'm bringing this cold grey two down here as well. Just going over the top of this warm grey. And again, if you come in too far down, just make sure that you're lifting that pencil up so that it's fading into that paper. Um, so we're going to just get, I'm going to get the warm grey two here. Because I can see we've got some dark shadows under the fur. So we're just going to mark in some of these dark shadows. So you can see that the pencils have naturally created some here. So I'm just going to enhance them. And again, this doesn't matter if they're not the same position as the reference photo. As long as we're getting that resemblance of where the fur direction is. This fur would have moved as soon as this photo was taken. This fur would have moved. So it doesn't need to be 100% accurate. We just want that resemblance of this is what the fur is doing. Just going to bring that down here. Okay, and then I'm just going to come back into the area we did uh, last. I'm just going to curve some more of this warm grey two down. So. So back with the um, warm grey one as a base layer and I'm applying a medium pressure again and I'm just gonna I want to get this whole area covered now with this warm grey one. So we're just gonna cover the whole area. A lot of people, me included, find we've got a large white area and this is quite daunting to think that we've got to get all of this covered with pencil. So what I find, the easiest way, if you're comfortable with doing it, if you're not, do it section by section. Um, but if you find that you're comfortable, um, get the base layer down. Get that base layer down, covering the whole section. Um, and I find just having coloured down across the whole section really, really helps. It's not as daunting because you've already got your base layer down. You've already covered the paper. So it just seems like natural to then be able to go on top and um, fill in all those details so we could just do this section by section or we could fill in the whole area I think maybe for the ease of you guys um, I'll do it section by section I don't want to confuse you all by me going in and saying cover the whole thing um, which is probably what I would normally do um, I will do it section by section just to keep guiding you through it um, so I've got my warm grey two, and again I'm coming through this area last time and curving like so. So I want this to be a nice blend between these two sections. So we want to make the blends look like we haven't just done one area, left it and come back. Which obviously we have done, but <laughs> we want it to be nice and smooth. We, we do want this nice smooth fur. Um, so 
Sorry, my iPad keeps turning off and I'm not quite sure why. I think there must be an update talking to it. So again, I'm just mapping in any of these dark shadows with a warm grey too. I'm getting some of these darker shadowed lines in, which is giving you the effect of the different clumps of fur. Okay, so just keep coming down. And this is with the warm grey too. And I'm curving round, following this dark neck direction. It's quite a heavy dark patch here. And I know it seems weird to be like, oh, don't worry about the um, reference photo. But people aren't going to see your reference photo. Well, unless you post a photo of this drawing next to it. Um, so as long as you've followed the fur direction... It's all still going to look realistic and it's still going to look like this is what the dog's fur was doing at the time. And that's what we want. I've then got the gold and I'm just curving this round again. Very lightly. I'm not pressing hard. Don't press too hard with the gold. Again, you don't need to use gold. If you want to darken some of this, get your warm grey free. Um, I just like the effect that this gold gives colour-wise, um, which I know I keep mentioning. <laughs> and I'm just going to bring this gold round and then get that warm grey too and just go on the top of where you've added the gold. Like so. And then sticking with the warm grey too, I'm going to bring the round here this is where it's going to be blending into that black fur but we just need to darken some of this bit up so this is looking quite dark at the moment but we are going to get a lot of dark fur coming in and it's really going to help balance out these hues and if you're worried that you're going too dark don't worry too much um, stick lighter and then when you've got the black fur in and you feel like you can go darker you can come back it is a game it's like a game where you're constantly moving between areas so like I could darken this up again and down here could be a lot darker um, so I'm constantly like flicking back and forth to areas that we've done before to help darken them up there's nothing wrong with that okay and then I'm going to get the warm grey uh, one again. So I'm just doing this edge where we can see the black fur joins. And this is like a nice point of reference as to where sections are going to be. And we're going to start getting this faded look again very, very soon. So this is warm grey one as the base layer. And this is a clump of fur that I can see. So the base layer is going down in this clump of fur. And this is one section that I'm just going to work on. And like I was saying with the white, so if I took the white again and come over here, I press hard. This is going to help with the smoothing out and it's going to push the pigment that's already on the paper into the grain. So if you're really struggling to get rid of the grain on the Fabriano, you can burnish. But do this when you don't think you need to add any more layers anyway. Um, just got my warm grey free because this area here needs to be a bit darker. So I'm just going in with a warm grey free. I'm just going to darken here. This is what I mean, how like we did this area last time, but it's just not dark enough. So I'm coming in with a warm grey free again, follow the fur direction. <laughs> I feel like you're going to be sick of me saying this, but it really, it really is important that you just keep following the fur. Like if we did all this straight down, it would the piece would look flat and incorrect because we're not following the fur direction. You have to remember that underneath the fur is the structure of the dog and it's that that we're trying to focus on. So I'm just darkening these areas a little bit with the warm grey free. Okay, um, I'm just going to bring it under this chin here a bit more. Bring it round. 
Okay, right. Uh, one grey two. Where we added this base layer. Again, I'm just going to darken here. And then I've got the warm grey free because there's a very dark shadow here, so we're going to get that in the warm grey free. And I'm just following the shapes, I just follow the shapes and add in these shapes. That's all it is. And then I'll go over the top of that with a warm grey too, just to help blend this area together. Like so. Okay, back to the uh, warm grey one. I'm going to come back over here and we're going to start getting this faded line so that we can blend this in. So, right, I've just sharpened my warm grey one, it was getting a bit blunt. And then I'm going to come back in and we're going to do it, um, let's have a look at the sections of first. So there's first sort of curving round here. See this darker shadow here. So, curved it round from this darker shadow. Curved it and then we're just going to the base layer in here so if you were working in sections definitely it's going to be a help just break it all down into little sections and again when we come to the edge lift that pressure off just lift it off and this is going to help you get a nice blended but faded look to the piece so if you wanted to do like a straight line if you didn't want this faded edge um i would get some tape um, I use framers tape. I found that that doesn't mark my paper. Other people use um, washi tape, and um, there is another tape like frog. I think it's called frog tape. Um, you just have to be careful. Ha use test sheets to see if it's going to rip your paper. Um, but you would stick a stick it on, and then you'd get a really nice straight line. Um, but I posted over on my Instagram uh, what kind of edge people wanted to see. And the win vote by a long way was faded. So we're doing a faded edge. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh -huh. Right, so I'm coming down and lighter pressure. Really getting that light pressure to give us this faded edge, which we're going to blend out. We are going to keep blending it out. Just showing you what it does. Just using the sharp points of the warm grey wool, naturally giving us some fur. Okay, and then I'm going to come in with the warm grey two again along here because this is the darker bit. And again, and I'm lightening my pressure, blending over the areas, and then lightening the pressure as we come towards the edge of the paper. So I've asked um, what, what other dog breeds people would like to see. And some of the suggestions have been uh, Corgi, um, another Collie type, but maybe like a Rough Collie, uh, a Cavalier, um, and a German Shepherd. So there's some options there. There's some options for what the next big tutorial could be. I'm going to have a look through some photos and see what I could do next. I think as well I may do a little eye study. Um, I may do like a big tutorial and then do little studies where like we focus on like the nose or the eyes. Um, and then I can really go into detail about what I do in those areas. Because um, some pieces like this, you don't always get the huge amount of detail that I like to get. Um, I'm going to get the warm grey one again. I'm just going to lighten that pressure to help with this faded edge. And get the white. And we're going to blend just along this edge. I don't want it anywhere else, but drag that pigment down and blend. Now, I know I said um, I wanted my tutorials to be like photos of mine, but I think I will have a look on like the um, Pixabay and the Unsplash sites because I've not been able to get out to many dog shows, obviously, with what the current situation of the world has been. 
Um, I don't always have all the breeds yet. Uh, this is one grade two. So I'm I'm contemplating keeping some of the photos I've got um, if I ever decide to do a Patreon, because I've been asked about that. So maybe like my Patreon will be more exclusive, photos that I've taken, and then YouTube, because um, I'd still do the YouTube. YouTube would be more like general photos that anybody can get. Um, I've got the one grey one again. Just moving over where I've got a bit of grey in there. Okay. And then I'm keep keeping in line where I can see this fur coming down. Um, let me just have a look here. Yep, so about here. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to do definitely do some focus tutorials. Um, but I, I do think I'll be looking on like the um, free reference sites um, as well. Uh, one grade two. Again, lighten. I want this pressure to really lighten at the edges. Taper off. We want that faded look. And then I get the one, uh, the white along this edge, and drag that pigment down. It's really going to help you with this faded edge look. Um, so I think hopefully you can see how this the fur just sort of fades away. Okay, and then back to the one grey one, and I'm going to fill in this section, and we're going to get this section uh, drawn in. So yeah, I think the next tutorial we'll do a focus, and we'll do an eye, an eye, um, and then I will have a look for another real time tutorial. Because um, I think the focus tutorials will help with like little skills that you can apply into these full tutorials as well. So that's the plan. <laughs> I'm also going to start drawing these pieces out a little smaller. So this piece I've drawn out a bit bigger than A4, um, which is why it's such a long tutorial. Um, but I mean, if you guys don't mind having like a 13 part tutorial, then that's fine. But I'd quite like to get maybe some short tutorials as well um, for those that don't want to follow such a long tutorial. Right. And again, as we come down here, I'm going to taper. I'm going to make sure that this fades. So I, I like to do this faded edge on like a curved bottom when I'm doing a head shot. Um, obviously his this line is quite flat. Um, which is fine. You'll still get the effect of the faded edge. Okay, and then we've got the one grey two. And I'm just going to Map in these dark shadows so that you can see. Again, just follow in the fur direction. That's going to come down here. There's a darker shadow there, and that's going to fade. So I'm making sure that I'm fading that, tapering that edge and fading it out with a warm grey too. And then we'll use that white again. Um, if I show you, I have the luminance white here. If I show you how the luminous white because it's so waxy it really helps smooth I don't know if you can see that actually that's probably not the useful show but it helps smooth out just the um, luminous white polychromos has given us a really nice effect I may have to use that pencil a bit more <laughs> I don't tend to use the polychromos white but maybe I'm going to have to right and then again just following I'm just going to sharpen this. Right, one grey two, nice and sharp again, so I can come in and get some really nice sharp edges. And I'm just following the fur and I'm just adding in areas where maybe I've got like a natural shadow coming through, just to give the effect of these clumps and clusters of fur. I've had a lot of you comment that you like these real-time videos, so I'm definitely going to keep them up, which is why I want to do more, more real-time tutorials. Um, but I do think the focus tutorials will help give like specifics of techniques as well. And it's always nice, even for me, to go back to like the basics and just do a study of an eye. I always say like if you're 
struggling with a particular area, just do studies. So, like, if you struggle with nose, do, do some nose studies. They'll really help you. And then you're not worried about the bigger picture. Just going to darken here then. Okay. So this is still all with the warm grey tip. I'm just darkening areas where I can see it needs to be darker. And if you need to taper off the edge, so here it's quite a harsh line. So I'll harsh on that line and then I'll taper the edge into this warm grey one area. And this will help you get that nice smooth blend. We've still got the shadow where there's a clump of fur, but you're getting that nice blend. And that's what you've just done down here with the faded edge. You've just tapered your line. That's all you're doing here. Okay. I'm then going to get the one grey one, and I'm just going to go over some of these darker shadows just to help with this blend. I just want everything to look so smooth and so blended. We've got these harsh lines now and that's because of the shadows but I still want the rest of the fur to look nice and smooth. So I'm just going over any areas where I need to just help smooth out the grain and blend the areas together. I'm just going to get that white again and I'm just going to drag this pigment down. And if you feel you haven't got a nice smooth area, um, bring, bring your warm grey one and taper that edge. And don't worry if, you, if this tapered edge and this faded edge is coming quite far down. That's fine. It's going to still give you that faded edge look. You just want to make sure you're tapering it off and then going into this white. And I'm dragging this white further down than where the warm grey one is. I'm bringing it down. <coughs> Excuse me. Right. So we're going to do just one more section of the fur here. Um, and then we're going to start coming onto this, some of this black fur. So back to the warm grey one for a um, section of fur. And I'm just following the fur direction again. This area is quite dark. It's fine. And that's going to come up into this curve bit. I'm not worried about these black hairs because we can we can um, draw over the top with the black for the fur details. And I'm coming down again, following this fur direction. Fade, taper and fade along this bottom edge. Taper. So it's all about your pressure. And if you're not sure, get a scrap piece of paper and have a practice on doing your tapered edges. There's no rush. You can really slow down when you're doing pieces like this. Just don't rush. And tapering off. Um, so I'm just going to bring this down here. And this is the last section of the white fur. We'll get some dark fur in next. Some mats and that warm grey there. Some sure. mat paper a little bit. Sorry, I'm mumbling to myself. There's some marks on my um, warm grey one then. It's just I'm out of the paper, but that's fine. Right, we've then got the warm grey two, and we're going to start blending again, fading the edges. 
So this area is going to be quite dark, so we're going to keep the warm grey too. I'm just going to darken this long pencil strokes because the fur is quite long here. I'm just going to draw in these clumps and again taper these edges. You need to darken up other areas that you've drawn, just go and darken them. Sorry, I'm just gonna move on my chair, get comfy. <laughs> and yeah, I'm just gonna come down here, this one grey too. Oh, sorry. Sorry, that was my dog. Hoping he'll be quiet, but <laughs> some point you're bound to hear him. <laughs> this one goes to, and again, I'm making sure I'm getting this tapered edge. Increasing my pressure where I need it to be a little darker. Just looking at the shadows and the shapes that the shadows are creating, and that's all I'm drawing in, it's the shapes. I'm going to get my gold. I'm going to come into where these shadows are. Lighter pressure. Take this edge off. Again, you can do this with the warm grey free, and if you use the warm grey free, use lighter pressure, don't press too hard, but you should get a similar effect. And this area is going to look really dark till we start getting the black fur in, and more of this white collar coming round. Um, and then I'm going to get the warm grey one, and I'm just going to go over the top of that gold, and it's going to just Help with like burnishing again. And taper those edges. Yeah. Just push that gold pigment into the paper. And I'm gonna get the white. So just blend that back. Just blend it down. Okay. And pull that pigment down. Get a nice faded look. Like so. So you can kind of see now we're starting to get the shape of this chest fur. And I'm just going to get the warm grey to her. Just want something like here. Just like a shadow. And you can add your own, like, if you've got an area where you like, you want a bit more of a shadow, add it in. Just make sure you follow the fur direction and it blends. It will all look really smooth. Okay, that's blended nicely there. Right, let's move up and do a bit more of this black fur. So I've moved you up a bit and we're going to start here where we've got the whiskers and I'm going to use the white pencil, uh, the polychromous white pencil and we're going to press quite hard where these whiskers are. And the white polychromous pencils acts as a resist um, so it should be able to draw around these whiskers and if the pencils go over where the whiskers are, we should get that resist from this pencil. So I'm using hard pressure, I want this to be really into that grain of the paper. And I've erased the graphite, because I don't want those graphite lines showing. So I'm pressing really, really hard here, where this whisker is. And I'm going to do the same with these other ones. Lift that graphite, and then come in with hard pressure and add where this whisker is going to be. I'm using a very sharp pencil and I keep turning it so I'm getting the sharp point on the thing. So you won't, you can kind, I don't know if you can kind of see the wax bloom a little bit. 
where the uh, whiskers are. Again, just gonna bring this whisker down. So if I do the first three whiskers, and then we'll, we'll get some of this black fur in. Now you can, for these whiskers, you can also indent the paper, so that means getting the um, indent tool. Um, or you can add them all afterwards um, with the brush and pencil titanium white, which I tend to use quite a bit. Right, so I'm just going to lift this graphite. So we have a whisker coming down. And I'm literally just marking in these whiskers again. It doesn't matter if your placement isn't 100% accurate. Whiskers move. They're not stuck in place. You just want a general idea of where they are um, on the piece. And then we've got one whisker off here. Right. Okay, so I'm going to go in with my long grey one, which I need to sharpen. So we've got the warm grey one and we have the blend again between this white fur of the muzzle and the black fur. So I'm going to leave a gap like I do. Then we're going to get this warm grey one in here. And along where that whisker is. So you can see if you try and draw over, you're getting a bit of a warm greyish white. But I, I am getting that resist from the white. If you're not getting the resist, you've not pressed hard enough. But I am avoiding, I don't want to colour over the white whiskers. I want them to be stark white. Um, again, following this fur direction, I'm just going to come to about here with a warm grey one. I'm going to get my cold grey one for the, um, the blend between the dark and the light here. And I'm just going to blend in with the warm grey one. Just go for that white, so I've just noticed I've not brought this whisker far along. Right, cold grey one again. Into there. I'm just going to use that white again there on that whisker. Okay. Um, and then that cold grey one blend into that warm grey. Okay. Then I'm going to get my, um, my dark indigo. So I've got the dark indigo and I am very gently adding where this darker area is with the dark indigo. So this will shine through those darker bits. Again, I'm avoiding where I can see that whisker line is. I don't want that to be blue. I don't want a blue whisker. Following that fur direction, very light pressure, I'm not pressing hard at all. Um, my pencil's small, but I'm holding it towards the end of the pencil. So hold your pencil halfway or to the end of the pencil. Um, and then I'm going to get the cold grey six. Um, and with a bit of a harder pressure now, just start coming in. Just to darken here, still give that bluish hue tone. Just a bit on the top of that whisker as well. Um, follow that for the direction. And I'm going to get the black, and where I can see that this is black, I press harder. And I'm going to start. So, for these white markings, come in from this dark area, and we're tapering again this so coming in from the dark and out into that white and it's going to give you the tapered edge and it's that black fur blending into the white giving us the um, markings and again this black sort of comes along here and then does the black and I'm going to taper edge here this is slightly, and I'm going to get the cold grey six again, and I'm just going to darken 
here. So we can see we're getting this whisker and I really need that whisker to be nice and crisp. So I've got my sharp warm gray, uh, cold gray six, sorry. And I'm going to come along the top of the whisker, pressing really hard. And I want a nice sharp edge. Do you see how we're starting to sharpen this edge? I want a really sharp edge. So I'm just pressing hard. This bit can be cold gray six as well, darkened up. And then I'm going to do the same along the bottom, cold grey 6, using the sharp point of the pencil to sharpen that edge of the whisker. Like so. So we've got one whisker coming in now and um, you've got the nice sharp edge that it's um, creating. So I've just adjusted my light. I'm hoping that you can kind of see this better now. There isn't that wax bloom. So I'm just going to get this cold grey 6, just going to darken this area here. Just slightly. So I hope that you can kind of see that now. We've got a nice little area here. I'm just going to go in again with the black along here. I'm just going to darken very slowly going along this edge of this whisker, getting that sharp edge, and then blending out into the cold gray six. Right, and then do the same between this whisker and the white fur. So I've got the uh, warm grey one, uh, that's not warm grey one, <laughs> warm grey one, following where I've, I've got that whisker line, leaving a gap where we can use the cold grey to blend into the warm grey one, following where this black marking is, and we're following the fur direction, which is going that way. So don't don't be tricked into following the shape of the uh, like the the fur isn't going in the same direction as this whisker and it can be an easy trap to fall into in that you bring the fur down and round with the whisker but the fur is actually going across and then it's going to curve around here so what i'm doing is i'm using the warm gray one to follow the whisker where we've got the whisker and it's following this whisker below it as well. So I'm drawing those um, sharp lines around the whiskers, but then I'm getting the fur and we are going to be bringing the fur across. So here we can see how I've done that. So follow the line of the whiskers, but then bring your fur, your base layer across. So if we just do this small section first, um, so I've got my cold grey one to blend these two sections together. So I'm blending over that warm grey and then get in my dark indigo again. And I'm following this dark markings but making sure that I'm keeping an eye on the fur direction. So it's kind of going this way. I may have to make this whisker a little thinner. I think I've made this one a bit too thick. That's fine. So I'm following that fur, that whisker, getting that line, but then the fur is going across like this. Okay, and then get the cold grey six, harder pressure. You could also use the Payne's grey if you wanted. Um, if you wanted it a bit more bluer. Okay, harder pressure with the cold grey six. So just still following this for direction, harder pressure, cold grey six. And then we'll get the black. Nice and sharp because I want this whisker point. So I'm going to taper that edge and then I'm going to bring this black along the edge of this whisker. I think it's looking wide because we've not brought this um, fur down here. So that whisker's looking quite wide because we've not actually brought that fur down yet. And all this, I'm going to actually use quite hard pressure with the black. I want this area to be quite dark. It is dark in the photo. 
have that blue undertone so it's gonna look nice but it is dark and again I'm tapering my lines to give us that nice tran transition between the white and the dark and then coming up I'm just going to darken here again I'm just going to bring this black along the edge of this whisker because it's conf it just looks so wide there probably get it even thinner but we, we can sort that out later so you can see now how we're really starting to get the transitions between the white and the dark areas it's starting to look more realistic now um, i'm just going to get the cold gray just to blend here a bit better just want the nice blends okay right and then we'll just keep going so it's just a matter of um, do we keep going with the whiskers? I kind of want to get this fur in because I am I can see that this whiskers are annoying me. It's looking wide and I don't want it to look wide. So we're going to get the warm grey one here. I'm going to follow the fur direction here. And then I can bring this whisker in here. So the fur direction is coming here like this. This is the warm grey one as a base layer. I just want to add a bit of this fur in because it is it was making this whisker look too wide. Um and that's bugging me. Okay, um so we'll get the dark indigo. Nice straight edge here. And follow that fur direction so it's curved, it's starting to curve around now. Bringing that what the dark indigo up into this face as well. So we're going to start blending these two areas together, which will probably be on the next part. I'm hoping we can get this face done and this chest, and then we can really focus on getting this black fur finished. Okay, and then the cold grey six, increasing my pressure a little bit, I'm getting darker, darker lay down of this cold grey six, careful where those whisker lines are, and making sure it all blends smoothly. So I'm hoping that it's not going to be long now that we should get this piece finished. I'm hoping if we can get his muzzle finished today, maybe start a little bit around here, we'll see. Um, it's then just black, quite a bit of black fur, obviously. <laughs> but yeah, we're, we're getting there. We are getting there, guys. Um, and then get the black. Um, so I'm following the black and I'm marking in some of these darker fur lines. It's like a line there and then this bit here is quite dark. Pull that down here. I think I'm going to get the dark sepia. Yeah. I'm just going to go over where this cold grey six is. Just want this to be a bit darker. Yeah. So this is the dark sepia going over the cold grey six. Blending into that darker area. Followed that fur direction, shorter pencil strokes than what we were using earlier. Um, and then get that black again, just to really darken. So really press hard where you really want it to be black. Now again, you could go straight in with the black where we've added the black. Um, personal preference, I like having those colours shining through. Okay. Like so. Right, back to the warm grey one. Again, leaving a gap where we're going to combine these two areas. Following around the whisker first so that we've got the whisker mark marked out. And now this is coming into where we've got the mouth. So we've got a line coming over. So I'm not bringing the warm grey right down 
to this mouth I'm so stopping a little bit above and then I'm going to follow that whisker curve round like that and then sideways we're not following the curves of the whisker for the fur the fur is coming sideways on like that and again this is a dark area so uh cold grey one first sorry let's blend these in cold grey one over that warm grey one and then i've got the dark indigo over this warm grey one so this whiskers may be a bit too thick at the base there so we may um may have to sort that whisker out, but that's fine. Don't worry if your whiskers are quite thick. We can sort them out afterwards. And I'm coming down here. Now this area is really dark, so I'm going in first with a dark indigo. And I'm going to... So that's one layer. I'm going to go over that again with a dark indigo. Light pressure. I'm not pressing hard, which is why I've done two layers of, dark in, of the dark indigo. Then I'm going to get the black. And I'm paying attention to where the whisker line is and I'm pressing hard I need this to be black now I've not blended this into the um, white muzzle yet because there's a whisker coming down here which is kind of cutting off here which is why I've got that straight edge and then we're curving that round and this is really dark so I'm just pressing hard and just getting that nice and black getting that sharp edge there I'm then coming up here where there's a bit of a um, darker marking and I'm very lightly with a black just blending this muzzle marking where that whisker is and then blending that dark muzzle in to the white okay so we're starting to get this really nice area between the muzzle and the dark fur coming together now um, again we've got this section here so we've got the warm grey one leaving a small gap where that whisker's coming down it's got a line there cold grey one to blend these two areas together going over that warm grey and then the dark indigo so this is one little section just taking it slowly and I'm using the whiskers to help with the sectioning dark indigo very gently with the dark indigo and then i'm going to go in with the dark indigo uh, dark sepia sorry i'm going to blend these areas in so i'm just going to fairly hard of pressure just want some of these lines in there like so and then i'm just going to use circular motions just to help darken this area it's not quite black but it's quite dark so like so so you see we're starting to very slowly and then i've got the black and i'm just very gently along the edge here gonna short lines almost stippling so it's almost like dotting pulling over that dark sepia then get the uh one gray one and i'm gonna Um, sorry, I'm just bringing this down a bit more. I feel like this needs a bit more of an edge here. That's so. Uh, okay, one grey one. In this corner of the mouth. And again, I'm kind of following this line and we're here. So it's all lining up. And this is black fur. Along the edge of that whisker. So the whiskers are a little thick. So we may have to come in and... Um, make them a bit thinner but we, we'll see because it may all make sense um, I find it hard to tell till I've got all the fur in um, right so that was uh, I need my dark indigo I want this bluish undertone and then I've got the black hard pressure I want this to look black and I am just going to make this whisker a little thinner so I'm just hard pressure with that black
like so. So you can see we're really starting to get this um, nice effect. So I'm just going to come in again. I am going to make these whiskers thinner. I don't like how thin they, how thick they are. So I'm just getting that black. Nice sharp edge. And I'm going to do the same along here. Just going to thin it off ever so slightly. Like so. Right. We then have... Uh, this area is sort of a load of whiskers, so one grey one in this corner. And that's going down into a clump of whiskers there, and that's whiskers there. Right. So that's the one grey one, and then the cold grey one, just over the top. Hell with that blend. We want this nice and blended here. Right, let's sort this mouth out. So I'm going to get the one grey two. Um, we're going to start here. So we have got a load of whiskers coming over, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the slice tool or the brush and pencil to get these whiskers in. Um, if you've indented them, you can just draw over the top of them. If you want to um, draw around them like we've done here, uh, draw around them. Um, just for my ease, I'm going to get the slice tool out. So this is the one grey two. I'm doing that along here. And this is all going to blend into one another. Um, kind of leave a little gap there. I'm going to get the um, cup mortar. Where this one grey two is. I'm going to get that cup mortar over the top of that one grey two. And that's going to blend into that corner of that mouth. So we're making sure that everything's going to blend. And then I'm going to get the dark sepia over the top. The black and over the top of that could put Martin there. This is really going to blend these two areas and that black, uh, dark sepia again over this could put Martin. <laughs> so, did you see how we're starting to get this nice transition where the black fur is going to be on the mouth? But the whiskers are going to help us create this effect. Um, when we come in and add all the other whiskers then getting the one grey one and I just want more of this mouth coming in so I'm going to get one grey one down here now following that line of that whisker again okay I've then got the dark indigo so I'm following the shape of this mouth here because it's coming Round like that. This is the dark indigo. This area is, I know it's quite complicated, so we're not gonna. I probably, I'll ignore this area um, for this tutorial. We'll finish that uh, next time, and then we can just really focus on all this lovely black fur. Um, I find if an area is complicated, don't stick with it for too long. Um, helps for me. Uh, this is the cold grey six. Because it is a complicated area and we've spent quite a bit of time trying to get this right. Um, we need to give our brains a rest. <laughs> and we will finish on a high here. We're doing this like an easier section. Which is just fur. Um, now I've got the black. I'm going to press hard with the black. So we'll finish with an easier section. And then next time we can start with that this little area. And then when that's done, we can reward ourselves by just focusing on nice long fur. And I'm pressing hard with the black. Okay, I've then got the cold grey six here. And I'm just using this cold grey six circular motions because this is part of the lip where that whisker is there. And then I'll get the dark sepia over the top. Blend into that black. It's going to help you get that smooth look. Just going to bring that dark, oops, dark sepia down. Harsh edge for this whisker. 
like so. Right. And let's just get the top of this. I like these, all these whiskers have these tops in. So one grey one. Again, it's going sort of diagonally across like this. Dark indigo. So we, we are getting there now, guys. This won't be too long. Another... I want to say another three videos, maybe. I hope. <laughs> uh, Cold Grey 6. Um, I'm trying to do it in nice, easy sections for you all. Um, so hopefully we will... We'll see. We'll see how many more, but I'm hoping it'll be done soon. Um, I'm then going to get the dark sepia. I don't like filming huge, huge sections and then you, you're struggling. Um, if I do it in smaller sections like this, I'm hoping that it'll help. But yeah, I think last time I said there might be three or four more videos. I feel like I want to say that again. <laughs> so this is the dark sepia and just going over some of these areas. Um, and then the cold grey six just on top of the dark sepia. Like so. Um, yeah, I'm not quite sure how many more sessions this is going to take. If I zoom you out. So you can kind of see the whole piece here. So next time well, I want to finish this mouth and I want to bring this black fur down. So I'm going to try and get as much of this black fur done. Um, the ear is going to be a whole video on itself. Um, and then obviously we do have a bit of white fur here. So three or four videos. Depends how long this black fur section takes. Um, and obviously we've got to fade the bottom out. But yeah, um, we're getting there now, guys. He is really starting to come along nicely. Um, I hope you've enjoyed this one. Let me know if you've had any comments, struggles, what you need help with. Um, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye, everybody.